What's up, friends of the good mood? This is Manny, and welcome to one of the best robots in the game, period, right now, the Nightingale with Rhyme and Cryo. And you might be surprised to hear me say that, because I haven't really played the Nightingale much, but it was always, to me, for like, what makes this thing so incredibly powerful? What is it? Why are people playing it so well, and why, why is it every time the enemy has a Nightingale, things are becoming so much more difficult? The reason is, it's just one of the best robots in the game right now. And uh, to prove that this is really the case, tomorrow is gonna be a big day. I'm planning the top five war robots of 2020 um, in, uh, you know, the best robots in the game right now. And the biggest newcomer in this list is gonna be the Nightingale. Not because the Nightingale is the strongest one-on-one -on -one robot, but because the impact of the Nightingale in a team is insane. Every time one team has at least one Nightingale, things become so much more difficult against this team. And it's... I'm gonna show you in this video and also in the short sequence tomorrow, a different one, what makes the Nightingale so incredibly powerful. Uh, and this year is the reason. Rhyme and Cryo is one of the reasons. There are many ways how you can play the Nightingale. In my opinion, the absolute best way is Rhyme and Cryo. Because every time you fly up, you come back with full health, and you're fully recharged, and you have the full firepower available to take out an entire robot in 5 seconds. With Rhyme and Cryo, you know? And, uh, and that is insane. See, I'm fully recharged now during the flight, and I'm still flying, and I was empty before. And this is really what makes this so crazy, that you have so insanely much firepower once you land. You touch down for a couple of seconds, take out a robot, and then you go back into the air, because look how short that flight cooldown is, okay? And uh, I haven't even spoken about the healing, about the suppression, the combination out of healing friends below, landing next to them, taking out an enemy, suppressing the enemies in the air, healing your friends back, and constantly staying in the air, stealthed, where people can't capture beacons. And this is the big part, okay? The fact that you can't capture a beacon where a nightingale is hovering. And you see how long it's hovering, it's like forever. And you can't capture the beacon when it's up in the air above it. Then it lands for 5 seconds, or like 10, having double phase shift if it needs to. It has a lot of health on top of that. Uh, somehow, for some reason, it has a lot of health. And then you just can't kill it, and it just goes back into the air, and again, another 20 seconds where you can't capture the beacon, right? And this really is what makes the Nightingale so immensely powerful. It might not be the best robot in Free For All, although I'm pretty sure I can win matches in Free For All with this thing, no problem. Um, it might not be the best in Free For All because it really strives or shines in team-based game modes. And this is where it really excels, alright? And um, yeah, in this video we're seeing here a bit of that. Uh, constantly keeping the beacon here. He, he just, the Loki just can't capture the beacon. Uh, he's trying though, and all I need to do is just whoop, get back into flight, and they won't be able to get that beacon. For the next, I don't know, 20 seconds, I'm just gonna hover here and have some fun. Wait for reinforcements to arrive, you know, and then once the reinforcements is there, I'm just gonna land. Or once the enemy ability is out, you know? A flying out Chun with built-in legendary pilot quantum radar is a bit annoying. But with phase shift you can even survive that. Uh, but most abilities from Ravana's even, uh, or from uh, Leeches or Ares or whatnot, you, s you you fly so much longer, their abilities are gone by the time that you land or have to land, you know? And you can always trigger the landing whenever you want, which is another really good thing. As soon as someone p doesn't pay attention to you anymore, you can just come up and, uh, you know, or basically come down and kill him. By the way, guys, if you like this video, then subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet, and support me maybe even a bit by doing so. Um, as I said, tomorrow is gonna be the big, big f uh, top five robots of War Robots, and the Nightingale, in my opinion, the biggest newcomer to this list. The, the Nightingale has not really been on any such list in the, uh, um, recently, uh, but it really, I think it deserves the spot now. The playstyle of this thing, combined with Rhyme and Cryo especially, but also with Storm and Gust or some other things like Scourge and Spark, there are many possibilities. This one is just the best in my opinion. 
And um, yeah, so let's go over there and help my team. You see, we're currently losing the battle, but this Titan is already suppressed. The other Titan is just flying up, and guess what? That's right, he's suppressed. And he's suppressed by 85%, I think. And you can skill that with a pilot skill and make the 85% be... Uh, somewhere around like 89 or no it's 75 and you can make it 89 percent 89 or 87 or something like super high the suppression is really good now i'm healing up this titan while while the titan gets focused by four titans and i'm keeping this titan alive for quite a long time here by constantly suppressing uh all the enemies that are firing at it and healing up the titan at the same time but eventually, by four titans, like, <laughs> there isn't, you know, it is just, uh, I, I reach an end where I can't succeed anymore. But then landing, quickly doing like 250,000 damage uh, against a well-leveled resistance um, robot. And then flying back up. Look at this. Look how annoying. You just can't kill the nightingale. This is what I should call the video. You can't kill this. Uh, but I'm calling it something like, uh, this is what makes it so good. Because... I purpose I, I actually didn't know why this thing performs as good as it does and uh, yeah I'm starting to understand why people are so you know using it so so much and uh, and so successfully I've seen and I'm also going to show this tomorrow in the other video uh, where a team of two clan people had two nightingales and were attacking a beacon that I went went towards I can tell you that much I didn't stand a chance against this I could not capture that beacon it was completely impossible to capture the beacon there because these guys were just completely locking it forever, right? They fly so far. Also on Yamantau, guess who's the first to arrive at the center beacon? It's the freaking Nightingale now. Wow. So, uh, or at least very often, and that really makes this a very, very powerful, valuable thing. Now, let's see if we can um, land here real quick capture that beacon and turn around the battle because my enemy team was the enemy team was way more powerful than my team I think despite my healing power uh, they still uh, were really really good at uh, making things difficult for me here um, but yeah I, I got to say uh, I took a, it took me a long time to figure out which robot I uh, I will um, you know or which robots are belong to the to the top five uh, and um, I decided the Nightingale deserves uh, deserves a spot in there. And uh, who the other four robots are, if you guys like to, you can comment here under this video and already give your estimate about what, what you think is going to be the other uh, four uh, and which places they might take if you want to, right? Um, but tomorrow, just a day later, you get the real results. And let's go forward here a little bit. Yeah, my my nose is a bit red here, right? That's why I made myself smaller in the window. <laughs> so, uh, let's fly all the way over here. Go forward, capture the last beacon. And I think that's going to be it then, right? There's not going to be... I mean, I have another match for you. Where I do a similar thing with the Nightingale. Uh, let's... Uh, oh, we're jumping back over into... Uh, let's take the, take the Pursuer for a second. And uh, there's also a video with this coming up soon where I'm just fo giving you straight gameplay with the Pursuer and Flamethrower is very powerful thing going forward forward forward. Okay, here we go. So um, We have won the match with 5.3 million damage We did a lot, lot of damage also with a Titan really too quickly I, I would guess maybe a million or one and a half million or something uh, But I think most of that here is the Nightingale damage output and the heal stuff with the Nightingale that makes up a ridiculous amount of, uh, of points, right? So yeah, let's jump into the other match and uh, and show you a bit more Nightingale and um, I'm also running the uh, legendary pilot, which means that we have a um, a short, I think a shorter cooldown of 20 seconds before we can fly again. And you see I'm keeping down, I'm keeping these guys full health down there. Uh, as full as I can keep them, I will have them. Uh, except this guy who's running away from me, obviously I can't heal him. Uh, and then in the meantime, constantly suppressing the enemy. And then once I land, I really quickly take out these powerful, uh, this powerful um, fan uh, pa uh, bleh, phantom right there. That's right. So, checking the hit points of my friends, okay. And then walking in. 
Uh, currently, they're not taking damage. The enemy's actually focusing me. All right. Oh, man. He just went way far away. That raven. But he managed to take one guy out. Let's see if someone spawns here. Yep, there he is. Okay. Uh, I'm unloading everything I've got. And then look look how I outbrawl even a Ra Ravana with three, um, three, three cryos. Uh, because basically, look, let's heal up the Raven. Uh, because that uh, those weapons, first off, have a lot of firepower, same as his. And at the same time, um, we have uh, a lot of HP on this Rav uh, on this Nightingale. And uh, I must say, I really am, am surprised why, they, why the Nightingale has so much HP. I personally don't think it was necessary for this robot because it's kind of a healer role. And normally, a healer is quickly killed, right? Um, but in this situation here, this thing has like 340,000 or so HP. Let's bring him down to last stand because he's shortly, shortly ch uh, above it. And then he dies automatically afterwards. Okay. Can I suppress him? Ah, he's already around the corner. So I'd really like to hear what you guys think about the Nightingale. If you also consider this like one of the best robots in the game. In my opinion, maybe not in a one-on-one -on -one play style. But when you combine this with team play, uh, then it really becomes a monster. Here, I have the enemy suppressed. And he still took down uh, this, um, this, this Aochun really well. I have it like 75% suppressed and the Aochun still took a lot of damage. But imagine what would have, what would have happened to this Aochun. Uh, if I uh, hadn't suppressed the uh, the leech right there, it would have been dead with two shots. So let's fly and heal him up again. There we go. He's pretty much at full health now. Then healing up the other Aochun, trying to keep him alive. And due to the suppression of the enemy leech, we can. And then we land in the shield of the Ares. That was a landing that I purposely did. Uh, I still had time to fly if I wanted to. But I saw that I can land in the shield of the Ares, so I timed it right. And I was hoping he wouldn't change direction of movement too fast. And it worked. I landed almost perfectly inside and I could take him out. Right? So, um, yeah. By the way, we still have the giveaway going on. And in case you're wondering, the giveaway will be... Uh, the winners will be announced in the becoming coming next week. Uh, so... Maybe, maybe Tuesday? Let's see. Maybe Thursday or Tuesday, one of those days. I think I'm going to be announcing uh, the winners for, uh, for the giveaway of the 200 Aoming Titans. Now that we're seeing an Aoming Titan up there. Titan and the firepower of those freezing rockets is just brutal. Okay, let's suppress the Arthur. So that our Titan on the, over to the left is not going to take as much damage anymore. And I'm also flying to him to heal him up. You see him? He, he, he took much, much less damage now due to the suppression. And then I'm healing him up all the way. As far as I can almost. And uh, yeah. So the impact of the Nightingale in the match is absolutely brutal. And not just, not just in Beacon Rush or Domination. Also in Team Deathmatch. Any game mode where there are teammates around. You can do so much. Boom. Starting to suppress again. Right? To my behind me is also an Ao Ming. I should have suppressed him, I just realized. Um, yeah, but let's just take him out. Frozen, he's taking 20% more damage during that time. Immediately killed. And, um, yeah. So, uh, that's the, uh, um, you know, I'm recording one more video tonight, so, uh, which I've already prepared. I prepared this, uh, I played this today or yesterday and I prepared it. For the videos cut it together that's why my hands are now free just adding commentary later to it uh the blitz is suppressed i'm healing up the titan a little bit and then i wanted to land next to the blitz but the match ended so let's see how much we've done here in this match tell me what you think also if you want about the top five which you think you, which ones are those and um yeah thank you guys so much for watching if you enjoyed this video leave a like and comment down below and if you haven't already hit subscribe as brutal as a man can it for more thanks for being with me. you guys are awesome as always money gaming signing off bye bye oh by the way luca brasi that was the name of one of those guys from the godfather uh i just remember because i watched the movie relatively recently <laughs> so yeah see you guys bye